Chapter 12, we'll be talking about how to outline a speech properly. So this is going to be an extremely important chapter for you to pay attention to. From here on out, when you turn in your uh, speeches and speech ideas, you're going to be required to outline them. And so before you actually speak, you're going to email me an outline of what you plan to present. And this is the format that I'm going to be desiring it in. So as you can tell, it's going to be pretty important for you to understand um, this chapter. So if you have any questions, be sure to email me. Hopefully this will be kind of uh, easy for you and self-explanatory. It is not extremely hard. But we want to make sure that that you understand how to align the speech because it is such an important part of speech making. Uh, a lot of people kind of liken the outline of a public speaking um, outline uh, as someone who is a builder. And you know that builders need to know where to put things like the kitchen, uh, the bathrooms, and stuff like that. So they rely on a blueprint. And so many veteran public speakers say that they use the outline kind of as their blueprint in order to construct a very good speech. An outline helps them keep their thoughts organized and into a logical sequence and to see which points are relevant or irrelevant. Maybe they're improperly placed and they need to rearrange them, or maybe they just didn't develop them enough. Uh, it prevents them from rambling when they're up there giving actual their speech. Uh, so outlines help you organize your thoughts in a very logical sequence. Uh, to take a simple example, Let's say this is a part of a speech on psychological problems, uh, and you may have a section on eating disorders. These eating disorders can be subdivided into two parts, first anorexia and then bulimia. So it's really easy. It just kind of helps you keep track of where you're going and what you're about to say. So how does outlining fit into the preparation and delivery of a speech? That's a great question that we need to answer because we need to understand that outlining is the ideal way to prepare and deliver a speech. And it's the way that this speaker here, Emily Lopez, actually chose to do hers. She was given an assignment uh, two weeks before her speech. She created an outline, and then she made brief notes based on the outline. She used the notes to actually deliver the speech that she was giving, and she spoke in a very conversational manner, glancing at her notes whenever she needed, uh, occasionally being prompted by them, but mostly looking at the audience. And so outlining is a critical part of the speech-making process, and you may be wondering then, well, why not just write a word-for-word -word script and use it to deliver a speech? After all, you would be saying everything you intended to say, and you prepared it thoroughly, so why not just write it down and read it? Well, that answer can be given in one word, boring. That's right. Uh, a speech should not be an essay that you just wrote down and then read aloud. A speech is so much more than that. Uh, a speech that is read aloud, it lacks that fresh kind of conversational quality of extemporaneous speaking. So, so don't do that. And we're not going to be allowing you in this class to do it either. So don't just write down word for word and think you can read it because that's not really public speaking. Uh, so there's some advantages to using an outline. An outline is better than a script because it shows you the basic structure of your speech and it helps you to see the relationship between the ideas that you want to present to your audience. And the second thing is this, an outline is very streamlined. All the non-essentials are stripped away from your speech-making process, and, and the outline is going to help you get rid of those things. So make sure you use an outline that's going to help you stay on topic. So here are the three steps that I'm going to be recommending for you to build a speech. The first is this. You're going to create an outline. That's what we're talking about here in this lecture. So you're going to be creating an outline from here on out starting with your life in the bag speech and then all the way through your persuasive speech. You'll be creating an outline, and then from that outline, you're going to prepare some brief speaking notes that you can put on note cards and hold in your hand as you talk. And the third thing is, you're, well, you're going to give the speech, right? So you're going to start with the outline, you're going to make speaking notes, and then you're actually going to deliver the speech that you prepared. 
So let's look at the steps in more detail. Uh, step one is to create the outline. And what you're seeing here is just one section of an outline. An outline is not a word-for-word -word script. It's just a skeleton of the key ideas. For instance, you can see my first point in my speech would be uh, guard against online thieves. And then I'm going to give you three sub points on how you can do that. You can install security software, only shop on websites that you consider secure, uh, and never open email attachments that strangers send to you. So this is just a very basic one kind of portion of a speech that I've outlined for you. Uh, the second step is then you're going to take those that outline and you're going to make speaking notes that are based on it. Now here is the key. When you speak, you speak from speaking notes, not the outline. Now look, this is exactly the same information that the outline contained but it is in, it's only in phrases and a couple of words. You're going to use this same format to prompt your memory uh, as you speak as to what should come next. So as you can see on the speaking notes here, we've got protect yourself. That's our main topic. And then the sub points, security software, secure sites, and attachments from strangers. If you wrote full sentences on these notes, you're going to be tempted to simply read them aloud. And, and we can't have that. That's not public speaking. You're not engaging the audience at that point. So make sure that you do not skip step two. I will be looking for speaking notes in your hand as you record yourself, as you speak uh, to your audience. So I'm going to be looking for that. So make sure you make these speaking notes. And then obviously you will deliver the speech and you can look at this picture the speaker here has her note cards in her left hand she can gesture with her right hand it is free to do whatever she needs to do to drive her point home as she's speaking she's going to glance at her notes occasionally just to remind herself of what's coming next but most of the time majority of the time 95 percent of the time She's going to be looking at the audience, and she's going to be speaking in a conversational manner. And that can only be accomplished if you do this process correctly. Don't forget you have to practice, and we'll get into that in a little bit. So uh, here, a question for you. Why should you not use an outline while speaking? Well, hopefully you can understand by now that an outline is going to have too many words on it. It's going to be hard to keep your place. Can you imagine having a whole sheet of sentences and words in front of you and you lose your spot on the sheet? Uh, it just becomes a distraction. Your flow is interrupted. Uh, you also may be very tempted to read the outline, which is, as by now you've heard me say, is a no-no. Uh, that's going to be very boring to your audience. You don't want it. So we're not going to allow you to use an outline while speaking, but an outline is required before you make your speaking notes for the reasons that we said before. It's going to keep you outlined. It's going to help you make sure that all your information is fully developed. It's going to make sure that everything flows correctly. And outlines are kind of living, breathing documents. Now, once you start an outline, you are free to manipulate it to make it flow better, to rearrange things. You're not locked into your outline. Even like after you submit it to me, if you find you need to change anything, that's fine. Uh, change it up and send it back to me. It's okay. I, I just want to use these outlines to make sure you're on target with the assignment. Uh, so how is an outline different from the actual speech that you give? Um, well, uh, it looks like this. Uh, look at this outline on the left. Here's a slice of an outline, and, and next to it are the words that are used in the actual speech. There are a vast more amount of words that you would use in the speech because you're going to take your thoughts from the outline, but you're going to expand on them. You're going to elaborate on them. You're going to use uh, more words than you would in the outline. As you can tell, they look totally different. But if you trace the actual speech back to the outline, you can see everything that's in the outline is contained in the actual speech. It is just expanded upon. So there's a huge difference between the outline and your speech. How short would this speech be if you just read the outline? It would be five, ten seconds long. But you can take the actual speech from here and extrapolate it and go on to 30 seconds a minute. So there's a big difference here. So here's some tips on your outlining process. The first thing you need to think about is uh, choosing an outline format. And so you have an option here. Um, there are two formats for outlines. And the first format is actually the topical outline or the topic outline. 
in the topic outline, you're going to use words or phrases, and that's all you're going to use. But the second format is the complete sentence format. Now, some speakers use both methods here. Uh, the topic format they use in the very early stages of their preparation when, you know, that moment when you're trying to struggle to impose order on your thoughts and all your material. And then they flow into the complete sentence format in the later stages when you're re refining and you're polishing your ideas. Um, and, and the thing is, is I don't mind which one of these you actually turn into me, whether it's a topic outline or complete sentence outline. Uh, I just like to see that you're working on these things. Uh, I would suggest the topic outline is the first initial thoughts that you have, write them out. And then that complete sentence outline, well, you know what, I would like to see the complete sentence outline done um, and turned into me because that's going to let me know that you've put some good work into it, some good research into it, and you are prepared and ready to deliver your speech when it comes time. However, again, I want to reiterate, you do not speak from your outline. See that complete sentence example there? How tempting would it be to just have that in front of you and you deliver a speech from there? But remember, you're going to be tempted to read this. And if you just read this and if you get hooked on reading it, you don't practice the whole art of elaboration. You don't expand on these thoughts. Uh, so... This is just the outline. I don't want you to forget that. You're going to make speaking notes and speak extemporaneously from your speaking notes. And it's going to be because you've practiced. As public speaking is not something you just write down, have a good idea, and just take a chance and jump up there and get after it. No, you have to be prepared. You have to practice. So you start with the outline, you go to the speaking notes, and then you actually deliver your speech. Another tip I have for you is to use standard subdivisions, just like you were going to outline an essay. Uh, you can use the traditional scheme of the, uh, the subdivisions. M your main points are going to be marked with the Roman numerals. Uh, notice that each time you subdivide a point that you indent, um, each heading should have at least two subdivisions or none at all. In other words, for every heading marked A, there should be a B. See, that's the mistake in this example. So they have an A with two, one and two under it, but there's no B. Um, for every one, there should be a number two. <laughs> uh, the obvious reason is this. How can you divide something and end up with only one part, right? If you had an orange sitting in front of you and you divided it, you have to end up with two different halves, right? You have to end up with two pieces of that orange. If you end up with only one, well, you've not really divided the orange, right? Uh, one problem that arises is how to show on an outline, let's say that you have a single example or, or, or a single example for a particular point that you want to make. Uh, one solution is, is not to actually subdivide it. Mark it as example rather than assign it a number or a letter. Uh, that's okay. Uh, if you just have one example, then write the word example and put it out to the side and write a little brief notation. Excuse me, a brief notation of what your example is. Uh, but don't try to subdivide and just leave just one point. That's not the way it works. So let's look at different parts of the outline now. As you can see from this slide in this very visual uh, representation of what an outline should look like, um, and you can look at, at this in Chapter 12 as well, uh, it starts off with the title. The title's at the top. And then underneath are the objectives. You can see the general purpose, the specific purpose, and the central idea. And, and next is the introduction, followed by a transition between the introduction and the body. The, the body has main points, don't forget those, with transitions in between each main point. The body is linked to the conclusion by a transition. And at the bottom is any documentation, the bibliography, and a list of the visual aids that you're going to be using. So this is a visual representation. We're going to look at these in more detail now. The first thing is the title. Now, your outline should have a title, but you never say your title in the speech. You really shouldn't ever give your title of the speech. Uh, you should not say the title. Uh, and you're probably confused as, well, if I don't say the title, why should I have one? Well, in some situations, your title may be needed to provide uh, kind of some advanced publicity, uh, or it could be printed in the program that lets the speakers for an event know what you're talking about. Uh, your title should be descriptive. It should be interesting, such as, for example, how to train your dog without being mean, <laughs> something like that. So 
you always title your speech, but you really don't say the title of your speech in the speech. That's interesting, right? You don't want to insult your audience. They will be able to figure out what you're talking about without getting up and say, today I will be talking about how to train your dog without being mean. No, you never announce it. Just like in an essay, you would never announce this is what I'm going to be talking about. So be careful. Title your public speech, but do not use the title of your public speech and announce it. The second thing is you flow into the purposes and the central idea. So you're going to place your general purpose, your specific purpose, and the central idea at the top of your outline. And this is going to help you bring into sharp focus the main points and the supporting materials that you're going to be using. So make sure that you put that. If you have any questions, you can dive into uh, Chapter 12 of the textbook. It gives you exactly what all those purposes are. Uh, then you're going to flow into the introduction and conclusion, which is interesting, right? The opening and closing are so vitally important in a speech that they need to have their own separate sections. So you will work on the introduction. You will work on the conclusion. Uh, don't forget your body, though, in between those, because in the body of the outline, you should have each main point identified by your Roman numerals, um, so, so very important. The transitions, and if you're wondering what that looks like, transitional devices should be inserted in the outline wherever they're going to be needed to help the listener. And remember, we're looking for a nice flow in your speech. You don't want to make it choppy. Think about a nice smooth sailing of your speech and not a rough sea that you're trying to just be jarred upon in the speech. Uh, make sure you have transitions in at least, uh, I would say, at least three crucial places in between your introduction and the body. Uh, you'd also want to put them between each of your main points and also between the body of the speech and the conclusion. You want to take your listener on a journey, and you want to kind of give them this road map of where you're going and what's going on. Uh, also, your bibliography at the end of the outline, you want to place the list of your sources, such as books, magazines, interviews, anything that you used in preparing the speech, and then finally, your visual aids. If you plan to use any visual aids, you want to put a description down here. Now, here's why we put stuff like that, the bibliography, the visual aids. Uh, bibliography is very important as far as plagiarism is concerned, but think about the bibliography and the visual aids. You make this killer speech for this class, and you want to use it again in the future. Let's say a year from now, you, you're asked to speak somewhere, and you're like, wow, I, I can use this at the Kiwanis Club or something like that, and you want to go back and you want to do this speech. Well, you're going to have to refresh yourself, so why not go back into your outline and see, oh, the bibliography has all the links to uh, my sources. I can go back and refresh my memory on these. Oh, yes, I forgot that I used this visual aid when I spoke in class a year ago. I can take these. I can redo them. I can reuse them. If you don't have them written down, uh, then you won't be able to, to remember exactly what you used. And so that's why we include all of these things. So let's talk a little bit about speaking notes. Speaking notes, uh, which are brief notes, is a really good technique to use because it's going to enable you to look at your audience like 95% of the time. Uh, occasionally, you can glance down and you pick up your next point, but you're going to lift your eyes back up and you're going to engage your audience. It also encourages you to speak naturally and conversationally. You know, uh, you don't want to sound like a robot. You don't want to be reading. Uh, so the question really kind of arises, then why, if, if, if I'm supposed to be looking at the audience like all the time and I'm supposed to be talking conversationally, why should I even use notes at all? Uh, wouldn't that even be better? You know, I, w I would have both hands to gesture. Well, the answer to that is actually no. Okay, without notes, you may forget uh, extremely important points or you might fail to present your ideas in that logical manner that you've worked so hard on, uh, and you may forget and get out of sequence. And so uh, notes are going to bolster your sense of security. Even if you're in full command of the context of your speech, you feel more confident and you feel much more self-assured uh, knowing that you have notes as a safety net. You know, the best speakers out there, they actually use notes. Uh, so you want to keep that going. 
So here's your options. Note cards are the easiest, okay, to me. They're easy to hold, especially if there's no lectern on which to put your notes, if there's no speaker stand. Uh, but on these note cards, you're only going to write down the minimum number of words or phrases that are going to help trigger your memory. If you have too many words written down, there's two things. You're going to overlook some key ideas because you're going to get confused, or you're going to spend too much time looking at the notes trying to find your spot on the notes instead of looking at the audience. So here's the way I would suggest that you use your notes, okay? Use black ink for your key ideas, and then red ink to give yourself some notes about how you're actually going to deliver and your visual aids. Uh, so be sure to number each card. You can see that these cards have one and two um, on top of the note cards in case you accidentally drop them or you scramble the cards and need to reassemble them. I was listening to a speech about six months ago where a lady was given a fantastic speech about a missions project that she had, a clothes, clothing project. Uh, a clothing closet kind of a concept, and she had note cards. I was very proud of her. She was very organized. She had her note cards. She was going, and in the middle of the speech, she dropped them, and then it kind of all broke loose because they were out of order. She hadn't numbered them, and then it became extremely... Um, well, it kind of went downhill from there. Uh, she was disorganized because she didn't know which card. She had to take several moments to find the card, and then it was out of place. So you can see how numbering your cards will be extremely important. Um, if you're going to use a full sheet of paper, which is an option, I, I prefer not to do this, though, and I'm going to ask you not to do this, but in real life, you can use a full sheet of paper. Um, you can take the sheet of paper, and here's an advantage. Your entire speech is kind of spread out in front of you. And that's good, but there are some disadvantages. The first is because a whole sheet of paper is available to you, uh, you are going to be tempted to write down a bunch of notes, a copious amount of notes. And this is going to hurt you in the long run because in speech making, you're going to end up uh, looking and trying to find where you are on your notes. Uh, you're going to be tempted to read because you've got all this space. Uh, your eye contact is going to suffer because you're down on your page all the time. Uh, and, you know, a full sheet of paper can really cause your eyes to kind of glide over your key points because the map, quote unquote, is too large. And you've got all your points on one sheet and you can just skip over accidentally. So my advice to you is if you do use a full sheet of paper, you still use the same format as you would on note cards. Just keep it so brief. Um, now, a popular technique in the business and professional speech realm particularly is to use your visual aids such as like your PowerPoint or your posters as prompts. And, and this is a legitimate way of doing it. Uh, this not only provides the audience with a visual presentation of all the key points that you want to say, but it's also going to keep you on track without having to look down at notes or a lectern. Uh, if you use this option, though, here is the huge mistake that you must avoid. Um, you have to avoid subjecting your audience to this torrent of boring text slides, okay? And if you're going to use PowerPoint, you still follow the note card rule. You use phrases, you use words, you use pictures, anything like that. But you should never use complete sentences in a PowerPoint slide prompt, okay? That gets boring, okay? Don't do that. And the second temptation is, if you are using PowerPoint, is to speak to the projector, to the screen, uh, to the television. Whatever you're using to project to, you will be tempted to look at it more than you would the audience. And that is not correct. Your audience does not want to see the back of your head or the side of you. They want to see your eyes. They want to connect with you. So be careful if you choose to use PowerPoint as your visual aid or a poster as your visual aid. You're speaking to an audience, not to a television screen. So be careful. So we want to control our material, right? And while we're preparing uh, an outline, you don't want your material to become like an octopus, right? whose tentacles are just everywhere. They ensnare you. They tie you up. You have to control your material rather than allowing your material to actually control you. So here are four things you can do to make sure that you stay in control. The first is this. You need to revise your outline and speaking notes whenever they need an alteration. Uh, some students, they make this mistake. They view an outline as a device that kind of plants their feet in concrete. 
And once they have written an outline, they think they are stuck with it. And that's so far from the truth. Even if they want to make changes, they feel like they've had this outline. No, an outline is, is a living, breathing document. It should be treated as flexible, and it's an aid that can be altered as you see fit. So, so don't let your outline control you. Your feet are not in concrete. You can move it. You can move around. It's not that big a deal. The second thing is you need to test your outline. And one of the reasons for making an outline in the first place is to test your material to see if it's well organized, to see if it's logical to see if it's sufficient. Uh, for each item on the outline, you need to ask yourself, does this serve its purpose? For example, is the introduction likely to grab the attention and interest of the audience? Uh, ask yourself, does each transition smoothly lead the listener from one part of the speech into the next? If it doesn't, change it. You control your material. Don't forget that. The third thing is this, revise for continuity. Now, sometimes an outline looks really good on paper, right? But when you start making your speaking notes and you begin practicing, you find that some parts, they're, uh, they're not harmonious at all. They're clumsy. You kind of trip over one point to get to the next. Or maybe they're, they turn out to be just illogical. They don't make sense in the order that you originally outlined. Uh, a speech needs a, a really graceful flow. You're going to carry your audience smoothly from one point to the next. And if your speech lacks that smooth flow after the outline and speaking notes and alter them, okay? Change them. Get them to where you're actually achieving a continuity to which you're comfortable with. Uh, if you practice in front of friends, ask them to point out things that are confusing to them. Use their feedback, but revise it. The last thing is this, is make deletions if you're in danger of exceeding the time limit. You never want to go over a time allotment. You don't. Because if you do, you may not ever get asked back to give a speech. It's extremely important that you take your time limit into consideration. And each one of your speeches in this class are going to have time limitations. Uh, at least this long, but no longer than this. And how do we know if we're on time? You practice Practice delivering your speech while timing yourself. If the speech exceeds the time limit, then you go back and you start deleting. You start trimming things out. Deleting material can be awfully painful because you spend a lot of time researching and putting these things in order. But trimming things down must be done. You have to. Okay? And on that same note, as we wrap up this lecture for Chapter 12, um, what do you do? when no time limit is set, okay? What if you've been asked to come into uh, the Kiwanis Club or the Knights of Columbus or you're asked to speak in front of a church group or a youth group and they say, man, it's yours. And when no time limit is set, here's what I encourage you to do. Speak briefly, okay? You, you may feel like you have all the time in the world, but the best advice I can give you from a professional speaker to you is be brief, keep it short, Okay, don't go a long time. For a brief speech, if they just want you to say a few words, you need to aim for about that seven minute mark. Okay, uh, if they ask you to do a long presentation, don't go over 20 minutes. You don't want to overstay your welcome at all. You don't want to do that. So make sure that you speak briefly. Here's the cool part they'll ask you to come back. If you have more to say, they'll ask you to come back and you can talk again. And then maybe they'll set a time limit for you that you will know what you need to do. The second thing, this is just for your career, is how are you going to reveal your sources when you're speaking? Okay, So you want to reveal the key data about your sources as you proceed through the body of your speech. You're going to build credibility that way. It's kind of like this slide says, you say orange juice cures cancer, but what is your source? It's uh, what we would call a parenthetical reference kind of in an essay. You know, you would use phrases like, according to the New York Times, on, and then that you go into what you have to say. Uh, Dr. Thermopolis from the Kennedy Research Center says, you will give your sources as you proceed through the body of your speech. And also, you want to cite your sources in the orienting material of the introduction. Uh, for example, one speaker once said, uh, the information I'm going to give you today comes from an article by Margaret Zakowitz entitled Royal City of the Maya. 
and National Geographic magazine and from the website of the Mexico Tourism Board. So at the very beginning, you can set up where your sources come from, and that makes you credible. So these are just a couple of tips for your um, public speaking knowledge, and I hope you enjoyed this lecture. This is extremely important for you to understand how to outline and my expectations from here on out, starting with life in a bag all the way through your persuasive uh, speeches. You're actually going to be outlining and turning into me an outline of your speech before you give it. In fact, before you actually record it in this particular online class, I want to see that outline. And if there's anything wrong with it, I'll send you an email back and say, hey, you may want to consider this. Uh, where are you going with this? We'll have some good dialogue on it. All right. So uh, on to the next.